I've always loved the idea behind the Hitman series of games. Pulling off a perfect assassination without being noticed by anyone requires a huge amount of trial and error, as well as planning, in a way that I find really deeply satisfying. So with the release of the latest entry in the series this past week, I decided to go back to the first Hitman game I played, and the first one that many people believe nailed the formula, Hitman 2, and see how it's managed to hold up today. And while I was surprised with how well the game held up for the most part, there are also portions of it that were a bit disappointing. From the very start, Hitman 2 does a pretty bad job of laying out the rules of its many systems, one of the most important parts of a stealth game. In the first real mission you take on, if basically anyone sees you, disguised or not, you're busted. But in later levels, you can often get extremely close to enemies without them even batting an eye. But these differences are never really communicated to the player in any meaningful way. As a result, things can often seem structured and inflexible, both of which are diametrically opposed to what the Hitman formula has become in subsequent entries. There are certainly other ways to go about doing things, but if you're going for Silent Assassin, it usually seems like there is one way to get it done reliably, and in many cases, only a minuscule window of time to get it done in. And a lot of that is due to the game's somewhat unpredictable AI. Having predictable and easy to read patterns is an important part of any stealth game, but Hitman 2's NPCs have a tendency to randomly turn around for no apparent reason, take some of the weirdest paths, and as I mentioned earlier, seed through disguises when you weren't expecting it. And while the in-game map might help alleviate this a little bit, it still doesn't make it to where AI won't randomly turn around, see you, and end your chance at a perfect run. But in other ways, Hitman 2 surpasses its modern counterparts. It's masterful at suggesting things to the player instead of outright stating them. Instead of just telling the player that they can plant car bombs on the bottom of limos or snipe their targets in a certain level, the game just leaves car bombs at a drop point, along with a sniper rifle, which immediately suggests possible methods for disposing of targets without the game having to explicitly tell you how to go about doing it, a problem I have with the latest incarnation of the series. Ultimately, I found myself constantly comparing this game to Blood Money, and while it might not be quite as good as the game that would eventually follow it, Hitman 2 is still a great stealth game, unlike anything you'll see on the market today. This game has zero interest in holding your hand, and discovering the solutions to the murderous puzzles this game is constantly laying out for you to solve is extremely satisfying. If you're new to the series, I would perhaps still recommend playing Blood Money first, but I think Hitman 2 is still a game well worth playing today. Now, there are a surprising number of ways for you to play Hitman 2 these days, if you're interested. If you want to play it on its platform of origin, the PC, the best way to go about doing so is the GOG version, since the version on Steam is more difficult to get running properly and in widescreen on modern computers. If you would rather play using a controller, I would highly recommend playing it as part of the HD Trilogy on PS3 or 360. But failing that, it was also released on PS2, GameCube, and Xbox back in the day, all of which are perfectly serviceable versions as well. Every Monday, I look at a game that's at least 10 years old, what I would consider to be retro, and I see if it's held up today. If you like that idea, be sure to subscribe so you can see the latest videos. If you like this review in particular, be sure to hit that like button, and thanks for watching.